on this week's most craved, Leroy Jenkins. A cinematic universe isn't cool. You know what's cool? A cinematic multiverse. We, we've got this guy. Who, who are you? It's Steve Knight from Steve Daredevil. Knight. From Daredevil. <laughs> Woo! Hey guys, welcome to Most Craved. I'm Jenna Bush with Legion of Leia. I'm Silas Lesnick with ComingSoon.net. And I'm William Bibiani with Crave on Loon. Hey, Stephen S. Tonight. Hey, it's Stephen S. Tonight from Marvel's Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> Every, do you introduce yourself like that everywhere? I do, wherever I go I like now. It. Yes. I, I, I think that would probably help. So you get, does it get like free dinners and things? Like, oh, I loved episode six. Holy crap, here you go. I just... I've gotten nothing free yet, but the okay. service is much improved. We got the hoodie. Yeah, I did get the hoodie from, yeah, I love uh, that yeah. hoodie. from Netflix. <laughs> Thank you, Netflix. They're very <laughs> nice. kind to you, and you've been very kind to Netflix. The show has been in all the headlines. Everyone's loving it. I loved it Thank a you. lot. Uh, what, what? You're not doing season two, though. Was that, I am was not. That, was that heart? Was, was that heartbreak for you, or was that, or was that something you wanted to do? I, it was very bittersweet. When okay. I came onto the show, it was with the understanding that I had a feature that I was putting on hold to come in and help out. Uh, when my old buddy Drew Goddard, and we worked together on Buffy and Angel, uh, when he had to leave, I got a call from Drew and Jeff Loeb, who I worked with on the Buffy animated show that we were developing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also worked together on Smallville. They called me up and said, hey, can you help us out? And I love Daredevil and I love those guys. So I said, sure, but I've got this feature that I'm supposed to write and direct. So, you know, I, uh, I moved some stuff around with the understanding that I had about an eight-month window right. that I could do this. But more than likely, I would have to go back to the feature. Right. Well, the other thing is they announced the second season a little faster than I think we thought they would. Everyone thought they were going to do Daredevil, Jessica mm -hmm. Jones, Iron Fist, Power Man, Defenders, and then maybe a season two. Was that also right. part of it? If they kept to the original schedule, would you have been able to stay? Maybe. It really all depended on where my schedule was. Uh, but, but when I came in, I, I understood that the deal was that if Daredevil did very, very well, there was a good chance that they would go into a season two before they, right. they aired all the other uh, shows that were coming up. Right, right. So, do you know the plans for season two? Or are they working on their own? I'm not. Would you like to tell us the plot? Please, please do. The Listen, like, no, but like, are they are is are the plans already in motion though? Or are you, were you involved in setting things up? Or are they going off on we, their own? Direction? We talked very broad strokes about season two, and you know, I, I gave my few stray crazy thoughts. Yeah. And then uh, said, God bless everybody, and uh, I can't wait to see it myself. Well, I have to say, um, this this show has my all time favorite villain. And I, not just because of the character, but because of the way he was written. And I, I love when you find yourself saying, oh, my God, you know what? I really want him to win. I know he murders people, but, <laughs> but it's okay because look at him. Look how happy he is when he's with her. Yeah, so w talk a little bit about developing Kingpin. Well, you know, I gave him the uh, body artist treatment. Yeah. Uh, uh, for, for me, it, always in a, sh in a show like this, uh, you know, the hero is only as good as the villain. And I always really like to craft a, a, a villain, an antagonist, that at some point in the story, you do find yourself saying, oh, you know, I'm really torn. I know he's not doing things that are great, but I really am kind of rooting for him. And I also like to do the reverse with the hero, to have him do things that make you go, oh, I'm not really sure that's what I would have done. Uh, so for Fisk, uh, you know, thankfully, Drew Goddard had, had a, an amazing setup. When I read the first episode, originally the scene where he meets Vanessa was at the end of the first episode. And when I got to that scene, that really sealed it for me that I wanted to do the show. Because here you have, you know, the kingpin of crime. He's Wilson Fisk, not the kingpin yet. But, you know, somebody who's vicious, everybody's afraid of. And the first time you meet him, he's looking at a painting and he's feeling very sad. And, and I thought, now that's, that's something interesting. That's something we can really work with. Um, and then I suggested when I came and I said, listen, why don't we build him up for three episodes before we see him? We'll just push that scene to the end of episode three. We also did that because Vincent was shooting the new Jurassic uh, World movie. So we, we had to have some time before he could come join us. Um, and then, you know, you just get in there and you want to make him as real as anybody else on the show. And, and it's just finding those moments. And, and Vincent was amazing to yeah. work so with. Good. He was so good and he had so many great ideas. One of his great ideas, he, he, he calls me up one day and says, hey, you know, in the comics, Kingpin spends a lot of time in Asia. 
wouldn't it be interesting if he actually speaks Chinese and Japanese and just isn't letting on? And I go, Vincent, I love it. I'm, I'm putting that in. <laughs> and then, of course, after we, we get to the episode eight where he's got to do uh, all the Mandarin, uh, he sent me a thing saying, you know, th th this, this is really hard and maybe not so much <laughs> next time. <laughs> I go, Vincent, you've done it now. I'm just throwing it in. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. Well, um, well, the other thing that I think a lot of people were watching Daredevil for was there's a lot of seeds for future stuff in mm -hmm. there. There was an Electro reference in the flashback to right. college. Hopefully we'll get to there. But also that whole uh, Chinese subplot, that seemed to be dealing a lot with Iron Fist, with, uh, with Kun Loon. That, that seemed to be what we're teasing, a lot of the imagery. Was there like a mandate or was there anything where it's like we have to fit all this stuff in or was it just, well, we've got these drug dealers, we might as well make them from other comics. I can neither confirm nor <laughs> deny the okay. existence of Kun Loon. Um, okay. uh, but yeah, we, when I came in, one of the things that I wanted to do is, is really work on those details and, and, and hint at things that might be coming up. And uh, definitely with Madame Gao, it was a, a great opportunity um, to really explore that and, mm -hmm. and see where that could possibly go. And, and the same thing with, with Nobu. And, and see you know where that goes to so the people that follow the comics and really love the comics can get those little hints of I mean, I mean obviously a huge hint with Madame Gao is what she stamps her heroine with I mean it's called the steel serpent <laughs> big neon lights the steel serpent <laughs> right um, and and also what we wanted to do we were very cognizant on the show that we didn't want to alienate people that didn't know about the comics. So if you don't know anything about the comics, it doesn't matter. All you know is that there's something weird about Madame Gao and Nobu appears to be some kind of ninja. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really all you need to know. <laughs> I thought it was I like it. <laughs> very cool about about halfway through the series of uh, Vanessa is is helping him uh, Fisk get dressed. And mm -hmm. it, his yeah. color lightens. And I remember thinking like, yeah. oh, at the end of this we're going to see him in the white suit. And uh, slightly spoiler, we do but not at all in the way I yes. thought. <laughs> yes, I, I, and we definitely talked about that progression. We wanted him in, in very dark colors to start with. At episode eight, with that turnaround with Vanessa, we wanted her to literally help bring him into the light and lighten up his suit. And from that point on, he wears lighter color suits. And at the very end, we wanted him to be in the white. And actually, it's an interesting thing about that final Fisk scene at the end, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> It, it, it was, it was, at, we had a, a kind of a slightly different ending planned um, that we tabled because we were pushing it into season two. Uh, it, and we were wondering, well, what do we do? And Dan Buckley over at Marvel uh, called Jeff Loeb up and said, listen, I, I, I've got this idea. I would love to see Fisk. And then he described that scene. And Jeff pitched it to me and says, you know, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. And I heard it and I said, I love it. That's brilliant. That's exactly <laughs> what we should do. Let's do that. So uh, I, I hats off to Dan Buckley for you know, that idea. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of uh, live action superhero television. We're starting to move more into that field. Are you watching the other shows? Have you seen what like mm -hmm. Arrow and The Flash have done? Well, can you tell me, tell me like, what, what are we seeing now? What are we starting to figure out about superheroes on TV? Like, how is it working? Well, I think we live in an amazing time yeah. in television for superheroes. And one of the things that I love about it is that there, there are so many different styles and tones to choose from. Um, you know, people keep you know, on the internet, I, I'll read, you know, Flash is better than Daredevil. No, Daredevil is better than Flash. And I look at these two and I say, how can you compare these two shows? Yeah. They're both great. Uh, Daredevil has the, per uh, uh, Flash has the perfect tone for Flash. Uh, you couldn't do the tone of Daredevil for Flash and it, would just, it just wouldn't feel right, in my opinion. And, and the same thing, I feel that the tone of Flash wouldn't quite translate to Daredevil. So I, I think it's, it's amazing that you have so many different variations. You can have a show like Daredevil that really kind of has the wire in its DNA and, and, and that kind of thing. And you can have a, a show like Flash that has, uh, you know, so, so much, so many great things in it. Uh, the effects, uh, you know, uh, 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 j just the right touch of, of the heritage of Smallville. 
Um, you know, it's an amazing time. And, and now we're getting, you know, next season we're getting Preacher. I mean, who ever thought <laughs> we know. would see Preacher on TV? Especially, like, not hard cable TV, like not on HBO. It's going to be on AMC. AMC, Preacher on <laughs> yeah. AMC. I don't know we live we, in a time of miracles. How are they going to deal with the meat puppet thing from the... <laughs> They'll anyway, find a way. I can't wait to see. Yeah. yeah, and having having something, um, a more violent, more adult show is really fun. Yes, I like violence. Shh, don't write me letters. <laughs> everyone likes violence. <laughs> everyone likes, everyone likes violence. violence. Did everyone like the, the Flash finale last night? Did anyone see it? Uh, I enjoyed We're recording it. recording this on Wednesday. I, I really, really liked the episode. I gotta say, I wish it ended like 30 seconds earlier or totally 30 seconds agree. later. Yeah. yeah. Because like, mm. like him saying like, well, I've gotta try, cut, is, is dramatic. And him... Go, like, the fact that he's gone up into this temporal tornado thing is either it works and yeah. he stops it, he winds up in some parallel reality, at which point that would be a great end to the episode. Assuming that's where to, they're like, going, but it sounds right. like where they are, yeah. Or it's just like a continued problem, and like, it's not like he's just going to go up there and die, and that's how season two begins. <laughs> That'd um, be great. I, you know, I would, it would be a strong choice. No, I, I actually really liked it. Um, I like the, the tone that they've taken, and it was really, it was really interesting. I'm, um... I'm interested to see what happens with the... Do you want to transition into Well, well the, the cool thing about it is that they've talked that they're going to be dealing with the multiverse, which I yeah. think is something that uh, we're seeing beyond just comic books right yeah. now. We have... Uh, th there's the Lego uh, <laughs> cross Dimension. uh, dimensions, yeah. where it's like Back to the Future and Jurassic Park and all sorts of weird things. Mm. It sounds like the 23 Jump Street is sort of going to cross over with other franchises. I think that the, the nerdy idea of all fictional universes existing and being equal is finally something that's starting to spill over into like the general populace. It's very Ready like Player that. One, if you think about it, right. where like you can go and have all of these different, I don't know if you've read it, but if you haven't, you should, um, where you have all of these different worlds inside of virtual reality, and but they all exist within the same. Right, but it's something that we, it's like one of the key aspects of comic book storytelling that we haven't brought into the live action adaptations yet. You know, the idea of like, yeah, all these other things, just an alternate version, like there might be like a Spider-Man universe Thing where the Tobey Maguire thing exists and the Andrew Spider Garfield Gwen. and Spider Gwen, Spider why not? Yeah, fine. But like we Gwen. haven't really been touching upon it, and it sounds like Flash is just going to embrace it. Have an Earth One, have an Earth Two. Maybe he'll meet Daredevil. Maybe uh -huh. he could meet Smallville. Like I mean, that's yeah. the cool yeah. thing is that DC has these different versions of their characters that they could always yeah. bring back in. We already have. Uh, um, I'm blanking on the name, but the, the original Flash on the mm. show. Jay, right. Jay uh, Garrick, Garrick with the helmet. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, like, his dad is on the show who played oh, yeah. the original yeah. Flash. So, oh, like, yeah. the original Flash can have it. could go to the original yeah. show. Oh, yeah. my God, yeah. that would be the coolest yeah. thing ever. I want to know if we're going to see uh, Earth-26. Do you guys remember Earth-26? Which one was Earth-26? Yes. Captain Carrot and his amazing <laughs> yes! crew. The Zoo crew. <laughs> the Zoo crew. Yes. Is it wrong that I really want that to happen? I really do. I'm totally, totally down for that. There's so many... Different alternate realities that DC has erased like twice now, <laughs> uh, and I want to I want to see them all. I think there's a lot of potential to have that be a lot of fun. Flash meets Sliders for like a whole season mm. would be really really neat. Wow, yeah, and I like the idea of being able to take things that you've done before that worked and bring them back in. Um, I mean, it's been it's been done it's been done in like little subtle ways, just even little crossovers. But I, I think this is really cool. I'm very excited. And also, you have the DC um, TV universe and the DC Movie universe, and which is is interesting. Phil Lord of uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who did the Lego Movie, commented this week that they're developing the script for the live action Flash, which they say will also be Barry Allen, which is an interesting thing to present the the general populace with. Of like, well, here's a guy who's completely different Barry Allen on the big screen. Here's a different Barry Allen on the small screen. On the other hand, we've done that before, but it was in like animation, like Batman the Animated mm. Series. Is right. my Batman. I think that's like the perfect Batman. But it was at the same time as the movies, and we kept it straight. They also did it with Tom Welling and Brandon yep. Routh um, with uh, with Superman with yeah. Clark Kent, and nobody blinked an eye. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think people are going to freak too much about this. I mean, I think that I think it's it's. There are a lot of DC TV properties out there, and they've largely been very positive in terms of re, uh, fan reaction. So. You know, if they do it well on the big screen too, then I don't think anyone's. Really I'm gonna... very interested with the casting on on the big screen. Yeah. Uh, because I think uh, Ezra, I believe. Yeah. Ezra Miller. Yeah. Ezra Miller is great, but I am burned into my head as we need to talk about Kevin, yeah. which I'm still haunted by. <laughs> I love that movie yeah. to death. So good, but his performance is so creepy and eerie. <laughs> but if you see Perks of Being a Wallflower, yeah. I think you I can really see like him more. He's, oh, he's yeah. very charming. Yeah. Now I'm trying to focus on that. Really version. great actor. Yeah, that's maybe best to. Of, to focus on. Um, one other thing we have, and this is 
so excited about this. Okay, so I play World of Warcraft a lot. A lot. And <laughs> I was on the set of Warcraft, the film, and I can't say what I saw, but I can tell you that if you play the game, just even down to the smallest prop, you're like, oh my god, I'm in Azeroth. And I may have said that a few times on set. So it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but, and I may have squealed and made noises only dogs can hear. But, um, but this is, so this is Ogrim Doomhammer. I, I know very little about World of Warcraft. Like, this is one of the yeah. rare, like, nerd things that I, so... What's special about this guy? Okay, so he's part of the lore. Um, there isn't too much, I don't want to say too much because they've only released some story stuff, but um, so basically part of the reason a lot of the video game movies don't work is because it's a big open world. Some, world of Warcraft, however, has a lot of lore. I've read all the books. Shut up, don't write me letters. Um, I, every single book, every single little bit of history I get my hands on Wikipedia pages. So he's a huge part of the lore um, of the, of. He's, uh, there's, a, there's a bad thing that happens. I don't want to give anything <laughs> away. And he's, he's part of the... So he's like a major figure in like the he's history. A, he's, of, an impo- he's not yes. a minor character. No, no. There's and a they, reason they went extremely detailed on his nipple. Like that's yes. a very realistic that nipple for a CGI creature. Books. No, no. But, okay. um, but one thing I will say about the film is they're going to very much balance the Horde and the Alliance. Because if mm. I've played as both, and there are wonderful and crappy Horde characters, and same thing for Alliance. So, you know, most people think, oh, Alliance is good, Horde is bad. Well, some of the characters they have coming in for the Alliance, not really great people. And some of the Horde are awesome. Not unlike but Daredevil. Just, that's true. Yeah. I'm like go. bringing it full yes. circle. Daredevil is still on Netflix. It will always be on Netflix. I think we'll ever see always. a DVD release and talk about that. I'm hoping. I haven't heard, yeah. but uh, they they seem to release uh, on Blu-ray their shows. So yeah. Well, I'm definitely want to. Hopefully, I definitely want to own it forever. Uh, so uh, thank you, Stephen Snyder, for for coming on for our 52nd episode. My pleasure. One year. One this year is this our week. Year anniversary. Congratulate oh us gosh. at most craved, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks.